Hey everyone, welcome back. So first of all, I apologize for being too late to make this video. Actually, I was struggling with the addressable asset system to make the asset bundles. It was taking between 8 hours to 1 day for each time that I was building them. And beside that, I had to test them out to see how is our memory performance. And it was really terrible. It was about 16 gigs of RAM and I didn't know what I was doing wrong until now. So in this video, first we go over some changes in our previous scripts, map data and map data inspector. Then we are going to set up addressables, and actually I have done this before for myself. As a result, I am going to show you how to do, uh, set up your own. And then we get into the coding part, which I'm not gonna code anything today, because I've done this before. But rather. I show you the code and explain it line by line. Now in the map data, I added instantiate map objects, which just simply iterates through all of the map objects and calls instantiate on them. I also extracted the record map objects method from map data inspector and added it here, which it takes the parent map as input. And in the map data inspector, I added can edit multiple objects attribute so we can instantiate the objects of multiple map objects at once. Now for this to work we have to use targets instead of target which it returns an array containing all of the objects in this case map data that we have selected in the project window. However for the objects to be recorded we we'll still have to do it individually. At last, I added the serializable attribute to map object struct and map data. As a result, things get saved to the disk. But if you have watched my previous video, if you recorded the objects, then closed Unity and opened it again, none of the objects were saved into the scriptable object. Actually, we have to manually tell Unity to save the change by calling setDirty on that object. And that's it all. Let's get back into Unity and set up addressables. First, install the addressables through Package Manager and open Window, Asset Management, Addressables, Settings and hit Create Addressables Settings. Now, again, go into Window, Asset Management, Addressables, Groups. This is where you set up your assets and groups and build your asset bundles. Now, I will go over the problems I had at the end of this video. For now, let's get, stick to the to get things work. You should already have the default local group in here, and we are going to put all of our assets here. The assets includes the prefabs, and they are the most important part here. To make them addressable, either select all of them and check the addressables checkbox at the topmost in the inspector, or drag and drop them into the default local group. By now you are actually done because the addressables will include all of the dependencies of the prefabs by itself. However, I prefer to include them myself because I think it's a bit cleaner. So go ahead and mark all of the textures, materials and models at, as addressable. I don't get into the more details for addressables now because it's not needed. Now if you hit play, it gives you an error which says that you have to build player content first and to actually build them you have to select use existing build from play mode script. If you leave it on use as a database, your build time will be significantly low but you are not actually using the address tables but rather calling address asset database dot load asset at path under the hood. Before we build it, let's create a new script called General Tools under Editor Tools. We need the change asset address to asset name method here. It does exactly what the name says. It iterates through all of the selected objects and gets their asset entry and changes their asset to the object name so that later we can easily use their name to load them. Now select all of the prefabs and inside tools general tools and select change asset address to asset name now click build and new build default build script wait for it to finish it might take up to 30 minutes based on your project size and power now that the build has finished i want to show you where the files are 
So right click on Asset Folder and select Showing Explorer. Then open Library com.unity.addressables streaming assets copy AA Windows standalone Windows 64. Now here you can see the default local group and in my case the size of the bundle is 1 gigabyte. This bundle will be loaded into memory when we need it. Ok everyone, we are done with the addressables. Now it's time to think about how are we going to divide our board. Well, it really depends on your own, you may go with different logics, but I use square segments in my case. Because the GTA sum up is itself is a 6km by 6km square, so that would work best with squares. So after all of this talking, we have to create a tool for it to make our work easier. Inside Editor, Tools, cre create a C-sharp script and name it Chunk. Now open it and our script must inherit from Editor window. Now I have written the codes before, so I'm just going to explain them. Now first write the lines I have highlighted. Ok, what are the X start, Y start, step, X end and Y end? Let's imagine our map from the top down view and place a grid on it. Our bottom left corner is X start and Y start, and top right corner is X end and Y end. Our code is going to visit each of these squares and it puts all of the objects that it finds in that square into a map data asset. And we specify the width of the square by our step variable. Each point that we reach is actually the center of the square. I divided my map into 144 parts with S squares of width 500 meters. For the map size of this 6 km by 6 km, uh, which the zero point is at the center of the map, my x start and y start is minus 2750, minus 2750, and x end and y end is 2750 and 2750. Okay, we wrote the code to open our window. Let's open that. It's under Tools, Scene Chunk. Right now, it must be a simple blank window for you. Mine is not because I have written the code before. So to give you an example, it should be like the inspector window when no object is selected. Now, back into the code. Inside on GUI method, we are drawing our fields and variables for our window and not something complex, so let's move on to chunk the map and create map data. So let's move on to chunk the map and create map data. And yes, we are calling place objects into chunks. There are two for loops here. The first one is x and the second one is our y. For each part of the map, we are creating a new game object containing the x and y in its name. Then we are modifying its position. Now we have to get the child of the environment. Actually, our environment is holding our map. Now we iterate through the child, and if the child is not our environment and it has mesh renderer, then we want to check if it's inside our square. So I'm calling a method isVectorTree in area, which takes our reference point lower band and upper bound. Lower band is x minus step divided by 2 and y divided minus step divided by 2. And upper is similar. It's x plus step divided by 2 and y plus step divided by 2. Here is the code of our function and it's really simple. It's just one line. Now, if our child's position is within that bound, we are going to change its parent to parent map. Now let's run our code and see how it works. First we need to create our environment, which is a simple empty game object, and position it at zero. Now place your map into environment. Open scene chunk window and reference the environment. Set your start and end point and your step size. Hit chunk the map and you can see the result. It has given us game objects that represent the square parts. Now that we have our map divided, we have to create map data from them. So each of these game objects that you see is going to be our parent map for map data. Now, open up scene chunk script and in here you can see that I'm calling the create map data's function. And it is really simple. It iterates all of the selected game objects, 
creates a new map data for them and calls map data dot record objects and then creates the asset and saves it. Let's get back into Unity and try our code. Select the map game objects and click create map data. It should not take long and you can see your created map data under map data folder. Now we have reached the end of this video. Because it was taking long, I decided to make it into two parts. The next video will be ready in a day or two, because the code is already completed. By the way, I'll be really happy if you join my Discord channel, link in the description. If you have any questions, ask it there, I'll try my best to help you. Also, if you want to support me, you can join my Patreon page. I have also put the complete code of this project in my Epic Patreon tire. Also let me know how was this video, cause this one was a bit different, the code were ready so I just had to explain them. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.